Hi, yes. Um, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, very interesting. Um, I have a bit of a two-parter. Um, so you mentioned the, some of the experiences that you've had um, witnessing firsthand these uh, wonders of uh, alternative religious medicine of the materials that they wrapped around your leg, which managed to do things that science couldn't really explain. Um, I mean, my question is, uh, why is, uh, when, you, when we call science a religion, um, it sort of implied that we're separating it from all the other religious ways of doing things. Um, but is this example of alternative medicines also um, proving more than capable, not an example of science within that religion and not an example of the scientific method simply conducted in the Far East uh, for them to come to those conclusions? Why are they separate entities? Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, I, I think it is actually a bit of a uh, uh, cultural um, delusion that other cultures didn't use some uh, version of the scientific method. It wasn't so formalized, but as far as like trying something out uh, based on a hunch, based on a hypothesis, based on a theory, and then adjusting your hypothesis based on the results of your experiment, you know, I, I, I think that people have been doing that for a long time. Um, science formalized that, um, but I don't think that, it, that it's anything new. And I, I don't even think that um, what, what happened to my ankle uh, is completely outside the bounds of what we're calling science. Like you might be able to to describe how the phytochemicals and the paste um, interacted with my tissues and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Like you might be able to explain it that way. Um, or physiologically, it's like a lot of it was the massage that he did on it, the little torture session. Um, that was my, but, but for me, that was an indication that you know, something was possible that, that, that I had not been told. And, but that's not the most um, uh, dramatic example uh, of that kind of thing. Um, about a year ago, I was at a conference and uh, I witnessed a man uh, put his, stick his finger into a concrete wall and pull it out again. Um, and that's, again, like that's something that, that according to, but what is science? Like I was gonna say, according to commonly accepted science, that is considered impossible. But, you know, I mean, what is science? When you really ask that, then the boundaries dissolve. Just like when you ask, what is anything? you might experience this as a philosopher. Like anytime you really, really try to pin something down, it, the boundaries go blurry and you realize that it isn't a thing, uh, that it is a matrix of relationships. So we get into trouble when we try to rigidly define something, which has been part of the whole enterprise of philosophy. Like the idea has been, at least in analytic philosophy, that you establish uh, a set of elemental principles and then apply reason to reason up from those elemental principles to achieve you know, Leibniz's dream of uh, uh, resolving every argument through calculation. And, and that attempt um, never reaches the, the hoped for certainty because when we try to create these elemental concepts and these contained definitions, we're, we're leaving out all of the blurry stuff. We're, we're creating an arbitrary boundary and the stuff that gets left out of that boundary sneaks back in and um, uh, 
sabotages the, the, the effort towards certainty. So anyway, that's a, a more of a philosophical point. But, but yeah, I mean, really, like a lot of these questions depend on what is science actually. And we can create all kinds of arguments by trying to pin it down into a thing. Like as soon as you try to pin it down into a thing, into a rigid category, you're going to generate endless opportunities for philosophical debate.